This is the EG2000 Color Genie and it's nice and clicky but it doesn't work. So let's check it out. So before we take it apart and take a look inside, let's just check out the exterior. It looks to be in okay condition, it has some scratches here and a scratch here that's a little bit, a bit deeper, it's dirty and we will get to that in a minute. It has this interesting analog uh, gog, whatever you call that, um, gorge, gog, I don't know. Uh, it has these nice clicky keys and it even has Petsky characters here, so uh, this could actually pass as a C64 even from the keyboard layout, but it is not. Um, on the right side it has a light pen in and a serial port and some kind of parallel port on the back. We have another port, which I don't know what that is good for, I assume it's for cartridges. Here's another 5-pin connector, which we have to check out. We have the on-off switch, we have the power cable, the coax cable for the, to connect it for the, to the TV, and audio and video. I assume this is composite, so we'll take a look at that. And nothing here. So, let's uh, open it up and take a look inside. So this usually comes with three screws. Mine just comes with two, so less screws to unscrew, I guess. Let's see. So the issue with this board is we have power on this side, which is the power supply side, but we don't have any power on this side, which is the actual logic. So power comes in here and it actually goes to this connector and there is power on this connector but it doesn't transfer over here so we have to find why that is and for that I guess we have to take out the board this is memory expansion these are the BIOS chips if I remember correctly yeah it's still dirty I didn't clean it or anything so I did check the voltage regulators which work just fine um, we have the minus 12 plus 12 and 5 volts all good we have power here on this cable which connects the power supply unit with the actual main board and the logic board but there's no power on this board so next step would be to remove the board from the case and uh, yeah see if there's something underneath or wherever that prevents this board from getting power. And I think this board has actually never been removed. And then I should probably pull these. We can get the board out a bit more at least. <clears throat> so I will pull this plug here. And that gives us the whole board. Nice. Okay, so problem is we still need the power supply in this cable here. I will loosen the screw so that I at least get a little more headroom here. So from the production quality standpoint, these are actually threaded in here, which is not too bad. There's, there's some lacks of some spider, I guess. So we could use this, um, put this to the back side. So the first order of business would be to remove this RF cable, but it's actually soldered to the modulator. So we'll have to desolder that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, so the main question is why, why oh why, don't we have a connection between the 5 volts 
line here and all the rest of the board and the 12 volts and the, all the others. So it could be some blown xenodite, but I can't quite make that out right now. Let's take a look at the underside of the board. Except for some styrofoam. So we should go from here to somewhere else on the board. And we should have continuity there. And we will see. So this still works. Still works, still works, still works. Let's follow this to here, still works. To here, still works. To here, still works. To here, still works. And it ends here. But all the way from here to here should be good. Let's check the next one, which should be this right here. To here is good. And this right here to here, also good. And to here, also good. And these seem to continue on the other side. Yeah. The good thing about this board is you can almost see through it in the right light. You can see that this continues on the other side and goes to here, I guess. Let's check that quickly. So this should be connected to this. And it is. Okay, I guess we are back in business. This is okay and ends here, it comes out here and should be connected to here, and it is, and that goes over here, and it does, and then it continues on the other side, right here, so we have kind of continuity, and we need We need plus five volts on the Z80, which I can't make out right now. Ah, it's right here. And that is on pin 11, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Should be here. No. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And there actually is 5 volts. We have continuity from the 5 volts line to here. I don't get it. How can that be? So that works. So obviously there are 5 volts coming from here to here. But why couldn't I measure these? Okay, so I guess we just plug it in and see what happens again. And sweet, nothing on the screen. So let's see. According to all this, we should have continuation between the five volts, which is the red line, and the uh, pin 11 right here. And the ground line is pin 29 on the uh, Z80. How can it be that there's continuation from the five volts line and no five volts? Hmm. We try to measure the connector over there. How can I measure this connector? Maybe this works. Let's see. Nothing. Interesting. I was pretty sure that we had five volts there, but 
And now it seems we don't. Hmm. Let's see. Let's put the board to the side for a moment. And let's check the voltage regulators again. Because there seems to be a problem with this one. And we have ground in the middle and input on the left side and output on the right side. So, so let's let's measure. Let's go and measure that twelve volts right there. Okay, I see. I'm an idiot again. Um, we should have ground here. And we should have output here. That should give us five volts, and it does. Pretty much spot on. And I measured the 12 volts, but just for giggles, let's do that again. We have the ground line down here, and we have the out line over here, and we get 11.8, which is good. And we have minus 12 right here. So these things work, which means all these bridge rectifiers work and we should theoretically get some output here. It should be 5 volts and it is. Okay, good. That should be 12 and it is and that should be minus 12 and it is. Okay, so all that works. So we have power on the connector here, but we have no power on the board. Okay, I did put the board back in place, connected it, and we should be able to measure the five volts on the Z80. Oh, we should say that, because it is continuity, but we don't get the five volts here, I don't just don't get it. Let me try this again, maybe I'm just an idiot again. And maybe I should pull the Z80 out of the socket. Yeah, that socket just crumbled. Let's put the Z80 to the side. Okay, so let's try to measure again. And a sweet nothing. So my question is, how can there be continuity but no voltage? We know there's power on the connector over there. We know there's power on this connector. We know there's continuity. So something in between just steals the five volts. I just don't get what that could possibly be. Okay, we're all set up. So let's go and check where the voltages are going to. Let's put this here this let's switch it on and we should have five volts right here so there's five volts on the Five volts on the connector. These don't seem to translate to this connector. Could it just be the connector that's dead? That would make all the sense in the world because then that would be clear why we have continuity. to solder these leads directly to the board and see what happens if that changes anything. Oh man, could this really just be a bad connector? That is just crazy. Okay, I tried to find another one of these connectors. I don't have one, so I will just extend this cable and 
solder this directly to the board. So Okay, cables are extended and now we go and connect. Oh, first we desolder this connector and then we go and put the cables in here, hopefully. I actually did connect the cables from here to here directly without any connector. Connectors here. Uh, I had to do a pretty hacky job because cables were too short and didn't fit into the holes of the connector and all that funny stuff. So put the board back in just it's just laying in there and I guess we are ready for a test run. I have no idea if this works without a keyboard so let's just switch it on and see what it does. Ooh. Look at that. It is something. And it's way better than before because we have a picture now. So it was the connector really. Let me reconnect the AV cable maybe. something but it's still a little funky let me reconnect the keyboard and see what it does oh look at that I can actually type but the image is flaky and now also, the letters seem to be broken. Well, I can't tie. Ah, look. Okay. Guess we're getting somewhere. So after connecting the RF, you can see that the machine was kind of working, and now it scrambles itself. I can still type, I guess. But I think memory is corrupt at the minimum. Let's quickly power cycle the machine. You can see it says mem size. Just say 20 and now it scrambles again. It fills the screen with stuff. So I guess at least memory is defective. And of course, seems like some caps or something that stabilizes the picture okay now it's gone completely interesting oh man that is really shaky and funky so i had it for a moment where i could actually type in stuff let's power cycle again mem size and gone guess something's overheating here but all the voltage rates are, rates are good so yeah, um, okay, so let me open this machine up again. Let's just, just put the keyboard on top and connect it to this gawk. And let's see what is what. Yeah, all the memory chips are socketed, so that is good. Uh, could also be this 74LS5374N. I have no idea. So let me reseat all the chips let me see if I have spares and then we try again so on this board there are 4116 chips and here we have a rich assortment of different uh, memory chips we do have the occasional 4116 but there's some others let's just say that uh, so I will try to replace some but I pulled this out and the, the um, memory error still occurred. So I assume that some of these are defective. So I will, I guess, pull all the memory chips and see what happens. Remember this little memory board that was inside the machine? Well, when I switched on the machine to show to my son, just gave a bang and a lot of smoke and that cap 
burned down. Took me a while to find it. And this is a 100 microfarad 6.3 volts, which is printed upside down. I'm going to replace this with standard caps because there's one here, which I don't want to blow up in my face and here. And then I hope that machine is good to go again. And maybe that is also the reason for the flaky picture. So we will see about that. Okay, here are the changed caps. Didn't have the right ones, so I uh, used 100 microfarad uh, 16 volts instead of 6.3. Um, yeah, and that one here is re burned really good. Look at this. So, okay, let's put it back together and see if this changes anything. Uh, at least it will work now again, I hope. You know let's how see. they sometimes say that the solution has to blow up in your face? Don't know if they really say that. But these two guys here actually seem to have been the problem with the video out because now I get this. And that is readable and I'm using the AV out instead of the antenna out and you can actually type. Uh, I think, let's check, 48K, it says mem size, color basic, ready. Okay, let me quickly type up a program and we will see where we get with this. So I managed to type in a program very short one at that. And if I type run, this actually freaking works. Can't believe this machine is actually fixed, at least for now. So uh, next thing would be to really good clean this because it's really, really dirty and ugly. But now that makes sense because now I have a working machine. Nice. Okay. So uh, with the brake key, that is brake. Beep and even the sound works. Very cool. Okay, so that I guess is it for this video and uh, well, maybe I will clean the machine and you will see that too. Okay, I'll let you have that. So I already did remove the top cover and clean that. So the keys are already taking a little bath and uh, yeah, they are spring loaded. You can see here, that is pretty dirty. But there's another interesting fact and that is that all these keys are angled. So if I show you from the side, you can see that these point a little in that direction. So you cannot just pull the key up uh, here, but you have to use a key puller and you have to pull with a slight angle um, to get it out. Yeah, so they are dirty, they are a bit yellowed as you can see here. That's down here is the original color, that is the yellowed color. I don't care too much about the yellow, um, especially in that machine which I have no emotional attachment to. So I will just leave it as is and the top cover came out really nicely. It's, it looks like brand new, uh, at least the, the uh, lighter part, the brown part still has a few blemishes but I can't do much about that, don't want to paint it. But all machines I have seen so far suffer from this uh, little uh, tear and wear, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, by the way, this is a location of the, the board where the uh, caps blew, and that one is the one that blew and just sparked out of the case, the closed case. Yeah, so going on with the restoration. So I just wanted to give you a little shot of what's under these keys. They are now all submerged in water and all the springs are lined up nicely. And I had a crazy idea. Since we are at the verge of cloning people, I thought from now on I always take some DNA samples from these keyboards and uh, store them in a safe place and as soon as cloning is cheap, like say 100 euros or dollars, I will go and clone people and punish them for treating their machines like that. And I w thought I should treat them just the way they treat their machines. So if someone has a keyboard like this, 
I will, uh, I, know, I don't know, uh, switch on the gene for greasy hands or something like this, or a uh, very hairy uh, face or anything like this. Yeah, so with this ugliness, uh, let's go on with the restoration. So here you have it, the nicely restored, or at least period correct restored, can't restore this year, because I have to paint this, or I had to paint this, but I will leave it like that. Totally cleaned. As you can see, it's nice. EG2000 Color Genie. And it actually works. Crazy. Yeah, by the way, I found out that this little gawk here is, uh, or gorge, gawk, meter, I have no idea what this is called. I found out that this meter is actually for the cassette port, so it tells you um, if, it had, if it has a good signal when reading from the cassette port. I also found out that the joysticks actually go into the parallel port right here, so you have to have a special adapter. And I found out that there's actually no speaker here. Um, maybe they used this case for a different model, I have no idea, but there's actually no speaker in here. So no need to replace that. I also did replace the LED, which is still a little dim, and this little black cover here. Yeah, looks... Uh, not great, but great enough. And the the white really came out, or the cream colored part of the case really came out nicely without even bleaching or retro brighting. Yeah, that concludes this episode of Retro's New Black with the EG2000 Color Genie restoration. Thanks for watching, and until next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.